My name is Annie Hedgepeth, and I'm a cloud automation engineer at 10th Magnitude. Oh, oh, it helps when you put the USB in there for your clicker. Oh, come on. All right. Anyway, as I said, I'm Annie Hedgepeth, and I am at Annie Hedgie, if y'all want to tweet at me, and my website is AnnieHedgie.com. And so I'm going to give you a brief history. Um, if you noticed from the first slide, I'm going to take you through my GitHub commits over the past year. We're going to tell a little story. And, but it starts before that. I have a degree actually, oh, sorry about the feedback. I have a degree actually in film. And my first career out of film school was as a casting director. And when you're a casting director in Dallas, you don't get a ton of like really great films. You know, it's a lot of commercials and B-movies and things like that, horror movies. But the very last film that I worked on was this one. It was about 10 years ago. Some of you might remember it. It was up for a ton of um, Academy Awards. And Daniel Day-Lewis was the star. And it was fantastic. I was so proud of it. And I worked my tail off on it. And um, about a year and a half or two later, you're, we're watching it, we're sitting in the, in the theater like all good film people do, you watch every single credit. And my name is Annie Hedgepeth, and <laughs> as you can see, that name is not on this list. I was furious, more, more sad and like angry and frustrated than anything else. Um, I had worked so hard, but what, ha what I realized was that I was in a long tail career, right? And so um, this is where a handful of the people earn the most money, like my boyfriend right there, Jude Law. And um, the vast majority of the people earn very little. And so you have these really hard working, oh gosh, I wonder if this is on and that's making it feedback. Anyway, you have these um, uh, really hard working, creative people and they're all in these really uh, long tail careers. And so uh, what I want you to be thinking of during this talk is how can you get these really smart, hardworking people that are sort of um, spinning their wheels right now in these long tail careers, how can you get them to get up to speed in technology so that they can maybe get on, on this um, tech career path instead and you know we might not be making the money that Jude Law is making, but we can use those we can use those hardworking skills and everything to sort of um, help alleviate some of their frustration and get them really productive and adding value to a different career. And so that's pretty much where I was at. I was pretty frustrated, and I was after a series of long tail careers, not just the casting. I um, decided, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to have to go back to school. And so I started studying for my GMAT, and this was last year. And I studied for a couple of months, and no offense to higher education or anything, but I really didn't feel like getting my MBA, I, because I thought that that was what, was, what it was going to take to get me where I needed to go. Um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this, but if I, if I don't need to, I'm going to try not to have to go back to school. And um, so I was doing some other things. I was seeing kind of what career paths I could take. And then I had, the very next day, you can see, I, I have a little timeline on there, had an interview with this guy. And the reason that he's blurred out is because uh, he's not my favorite person. But um, so it was for an account management position. I thought, oh, my skills can pretty much transfer, you know, as a casting director to account management. It's kind of the same. And so, um, I was ready, I was ready to work, I was ready to re work really hard. I am a hard worker, and um, so I was going into that interview thinking, oh my gosh, I've, I've got this nailed, I can do this. And, um, but when I got there, he kept on saying stuff like, oh man, I don't, I don't know how I could do this job with kids. And like, oh, because it somehow came up that I had kids. And so um, I kept on, you know, working my way around that. Yeah, oh no, it's okay, I got this figured out, I'm ready to work, work hard. Uh, and he wouldn't let me tell him what I could do for the company. He just kept on uh, bringing up what he thought that I couldn't do. So, oh, I was frustrated. And that just added fuel to the flame for me. And so, my husband kept on saying, 
why don't you get into technology? Why don't you get into technology? And I kept on saying, I'm an art person. I am not technical. And so um, anyway, we all know, however, that change happens when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of change. And so I was pretty um, ready. And so <laughs> when was this? April 21st. This was my very first Git commit. I didn't even know what Git was before that. And my husband says that everybody cries when they learn Git. Well, I said, I got so frustrated, I might have shed a tear or two. And he goes, everybody does, don't worry. And so, um, so I thought, well, maybe I'll just take my, I had a decorating business at the time, maybe I'll take my decorating business website and you know, host it on GitHub pages and try that and whatever. And um, I'm not going to lie, like it was kind of a challenge for me. And even just um, building the website, I thought, well, now I think, oh man, if I would have had, a, if I could have done it in a Docker container, that would have been so much easier because it would have been like isolated, and I could have had um, a little more encouragement along the way. Anyway, long story short, um, we had this. Okay, so this guy is my husband, and these two other guys are the authors of this framework called Inspec. Does anybody know what Inspec is? Anybody? Anybody? It's a, a compliance auditing framework that Chef owns. Um, Anyway, we had this great dinner at my house because we had this like DevOps miracle in my husband's company where um, he finally got security and compliance to come on board and not be the bottleneck anymore. And, um, and we, we literally had a celebratory dinner at my house like with these guys and because their framework helped create a lot of that uh, uh, change in his organization. And then the security compliance guys at my husband's company, his boss, some people from Chef, it was really, really kind of um, cool. And so literally, as we were doing the dishes that night, after everybody left, my husband said, why don't you learn how to, how to write InSpec? It's written for um, security and compliance people who are not typically developers. And it's supposed to be human readable and simple to understand and everything. And so he was like, they don't really have a ton of documentation. So you could like learn it and then document it along the way and provide these tutorials and things. And I was like, ah, still kind of iffy. And he goes, you know what, just give it three weeks. If you can't do it in three weeks, just forget it and just never do it again. And so I said, okay, I can do anything for three weeks. And there, it's like a win-win because if I'm not able to learn it, then I can just say, oh, sorry, I guess not just anybody can learn it, you know? But then if I was, then it was gonna be really beneficial for them. So, um, so anyway, so I wanna ask you, um, these, I hope you were thinking of like a person that has sort of a creative background or something like that, or maybe they want to do a, um, they want to make a career change, but they don't know how to, uh, they're just lost, or, or you really see something in them that you think that they would really add value to the IT world in general. Um, how can you convince them to give you three weeks? What sort of problems can they solve for you that you can get them on a road to, uh, to learning and make some progress and give them some sort of encouragement that they can make progress in, in three weeks. Okay, so now we're looking at like May of last year and I was writing my blog, it was going great, or actually I just started the blog. My first Jekyll commit for, the, for this blog was May 1st. Um, it was really great, it was going well, I was learning in spec, so I was writing um, these audits and then I was remediating with Chef and I learned how to use Visual Studio Code for the first time. I even learned, like, even just learning Markdown was, was something, like I learned it. Um, GitHub pages, inspect, bash, I had never even opened a terminal before. Um, and so, <laughs> as I was doing this process, however, Ruby gems were the bane of my existence. And so every time I was, um, so something that you might take for granted right now is that those little things, like, um, trying to run my my um, my Jekyll in on my or trying to just even look at localhost when you get a gym dependency error or something like that like, not a big deal right but to somebody just starting out it's super discouraging and how do you fix it and oh you you install a gym and then there's another one and then another one and so um, docker helps a lot in that I learned months later that I could have just been running this in a Docker container, in a Jekyll container the entire time. And so, um, so I think sort of using Docker as a way of kind of protecting the newbies uh, from the, the 
all of the little gotchas out there is really, really powerful when you, when you consider it. And so that's what I did here. I, I wish I would have learned this from the very beginning. I wish that, I kind of thought that Docker was really complicated from the very beginning. I didn't understand um, about isolation, containerization, all of that, even virtualization. I just didn't get it all at first. But had I gotten it from the beginning, I think it would have been more powerful and um, helped me to learn in a sort of contained and closed environment that, that's really cool. I'll tell you about, more about that in a minute. Um, the other cool thing that I want to touch on is those two guys um, at the dinner. Uh, one of them, Christoph, he started meeting with me weekly. And so um, just to talk about InSpec and to help, uh, help me learn it so that I could write these blog posts and, and all of this stuff. And what he was doing by doing that was lending privilege to me. And this guy called, named uh, Anwan Simmons gives a talk called Lending Privilege where he says, if you have privilege, then if you have a platform, let somebody else come up and step on it. If you see something in somebody that um, that is um, noteworthy, that is um, really cool, that you want to see, uh, you want to see them grow, then loan them your platform, lend them your privilege. And so, by Christoph meeting with me, he was lending me his. Oh, sorry. He was lending me his privilege. And so, each and every one of us in this room have some sort of privilege. I mean, just being here. Set, communicates that you have some privilege. And so who can you loan your platform to to give them the boost up that they need? Um, okay, so point so far. Uh, what is your, let's just call this person your apprentice, right? This, these people that you're thinking of. What are they excited about working on? So at the time, I, um, or still, I blog and I like to write. And so that was something that I was excited about. And so then I used, so my husband, sort of as my kind of mentor at the time, teaching me, technology. He knew this about me, and so he kind of harnessed that and, um, and used that to progress my learning. Um, and that's different for everybody. Not everybody's going to write a blog. You know, it might be something totally different. And then the other thing is create a sense of urgency, because like, if we don't have this sort of deadline or sense of urgency, we might not do anything. Um, and my sense of urgency was meeting with Christoph. Like, we, we met weekly, and I felt sort of accountable to him to produce something. Um, and then lend your privilege, and then also discover inverted learning. And this was something that was really cool. Okay, so I took this course, um, this plural site course on Docker. That's how I how I learned Docker. And um, the guy that taught it was named Wes Higby, and he talked about how Docker is really cool because um, if you don't have a background in technology, then you can kind of learn about technology as a whole, as in an inverted way. Um, and I'll talk more about that later, but. Whenever he said that, it really clicked with me because that's exactly what happened with InSpec. So right here you just see a CIS um, audit that you can do to, um, you know, to be CIS compliant. And so it just tells you everything right here. It says the description, this is what you need to do, set the owner and group of etsygrub.com to root user, here's why, here's the audit that you can run to see if it's in compliance or not. And if it's not, then here's the remediation that you can do. And so what InSpec does is it just writes that out in plain English too. Like it really is human readable. So the title, there's your title, there's your description, there's your file, its owner and group should reroute. And then, um, and you can run it all of these different ways. So you can test it locally, you can test on SSH, you can even test a Docker container. Um, and then you get all this great output back. But the cool way in which you can learn is sort of, um, red, green, refactor, and so you write your test, it fails, and then you go to Chef, and you write a cookbook, and uh, remediate it, or remediate it with a cookbook, and so you're learning about infrastructure invertedly, right? Like, you might not know what all those audits do, but then as you uh, write your cookbook, then you're sort of learning as you go. So anyway, that's really powerful when you think about it, and, and sort of every tool or whatever you can do that with. And, um, and Test Kitchen was a great, a great means of doing that because you can, you, it's like Docker too, like you're one command away from seeing something happen, which is really encouraging when you're learning and when you're growing. You want something to happen fast so that you can see change happen quickly um, because you kind of always need that encouragement to keep you going. And so that's what I loved about that. If you haven't used Test Kitchen, I highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, so containers, um, 
being the the one command away from doing something encouragement is what is what I really think is really super powerful for new people. Um, and it just helps keep it simple and keep it um, uh, isolated from the world of all of the things that can go wrong. Okay, so the other thing that I want to hit on also is that whenever somebody new is learning and whenever you're trying to bring somebody up to speed with all this, it can get super overwhelming. And so if you look at column A as the things that you want to learn, column B is the things that you are currently learning, and then column C is the stuff that you've mastered. Oh, and by the way, I got this from a talk called um, Making, uh, Making Badass Developers by Kathy Sierra. She talks about how if you pile up too much into B, then you're just gonna really end up with a bunch of half-assed skills. And so um, you wanna be moving things into C. You wanna master them. C is the stuff that you've mastered. And so if you pile up too much in B, it's gonna be, um, you're not gonna really have a solid foundation of anything. Um, and so as you're learning, let that, per or as this person is learning, let them kind of hang out on B for a while with not too many things piled up in there so that they can really master it. And this is gonna give them confidence. Um, and then if they wanna, I think that that's a great means of sort of, um, as they move into their job, they can specialize in something. And so, um, like for instance, this didn't end up happening with, to me, but I could have just had a job doing inspec and really honing in on that and specializing in it. So um, those are just some ideas for along the way. Okay, so if we're looking at July, I went to ChefConf last year, and um, uh, this guy, if we're looking straight at it, the guy on my left, um, worked at a company called Tenth Magnitude, and so that's how I met him, and that's how I have my current job right now, uh, which is in, which my company is in Chicago, and I started working for them in August. And so the thing that I want you to think about with in regard to that is, so when I met Trevor, he, uh, he saw in me something that was lacking in his team, right? And so when you're thinking of these people that you want to mentor or sort of convince them to get into technology, what type of person do you want to invest in? What's your team lacking? Or is there some sort of skill, some sort of um, uh, area that y'all have a blind, so blind spot in? Uh, find those people and invest in them. And then also just set them up for success with mentorship because Lowering the barrier to entry is one thing, but there are constant barriers along the way, right? I mean, it's not like you just learn everything and then stop. It's continual. And so, um, so the only way that it'll be really successful is if your company um, has a, a process, a program in place, or at least you personally are helping this person along with all of those bazillion questions that they're gonna have daily. And then while they're still a noob, let them specialize, like I was saying. It's gonna build their confidence. It, they're gonna be able to add value sooner because they can just uh, really add value with this one thing, and it's gonna cement their learning as well. Um, and so they might not have that really broad range of, of knowledge, but at least they can go deep into one thing while they get that um, other stuff. So in conclusion, the um, for, I hope that you were, have been thinking about for whom you can lower the barrier to entry, about lower the barrier to entry into technology as well. And so remember those points: pairing, mentorship, inverted learning, specialization, and lending your platform. And I like to point out too that now I do have a, a set of credits, and these are all of the people that loaned their platform to me in one way or the other, and. Um, and mentored me along the way. And if you can see it's not just one person. My husband did teach me a lot and he has been sort of the biggest mentor, but all of those people took a part. And you can play that one of a little role like that in somebody's life as well. And it can really be a game changer for somebody. So I'm Annie Hedgepeth again. And so please, oh, I forgot almost my um, shameless plug for DevOps Days DFW. I'm one of the organizers and so if y'all are in DFW, please come out and see us August 29th and 30th, or 3.30th, um, and that's it. Thank you very much.